My name is Julie Foote. I'm market development, customer service, um, sales, tech support as a local, <laughs> as a local not-for-profit member-owned co-op. Um, she just gave you the short list. <laughs> <laughs> we serve uh, those areas within um, our rural state that either are unserved or underserved. So we go where broadband is not. And um, so Pam Rosano and I um, are the people who are um, out in the community helping our um, small main streets uh, get that next idea that's gonna keep them thriving and bring those people off the interstate and um, keep that small business working. And some of the other things that we do to help support our footprint, uh, we do wireless to campgrounds and so that the city and county campgrounds are used more frequently, bringing more revenue to those areas. Um, we also provide internet service to the fairgrounds so that their vendors can uh, process credit cards during the fair and the 4-H can you know, do their judging online. And so in other words, we're just very passionate about the communities that we serve because they need us. They've actually, the majority of them have come to us and said, we need something. You are the fix that will be there today. And um, so this Middle Mile project is what helps us be able to continue to serve those communities in the growing um, fashion that we've seen with broadband and also to go to that next community and, um, you know, suit the, the needs of growing broadband demands. So our operations director, Tim Johnson, will speak about the Middle Mile Park Project. So we all love fiber. And we're in rural Minnesota, southwestern Minnesota. There is some fiber there, but not enough to go to every one of our locations or towers. Um, so currently we have about 130 sites, access points that serve our customers. Um, seven of them have fiber. So the, the challenge for us is with today's technology, how do you get all of that data on a wireless network back to your upstreams? Uh, the middle mile project we came up with uh, basically puts uh, 800 megabit, 11 gigahertz license lines up. So there are 58 of those going up. And these are expandable to double capacity 1.6 gig. So that will keep us whole for some time. But in the meantime, we continue to look for fiber pops because we have to offload that data. And if you looked at our, our network five years ago, 100% uh, of the backhaul traffic was wireless on 70 megabyte wireless links. Well, that doesn't serve well when you hop to hop to hop to hop. You do 13 of those, uh, you're aggregating on there. So, that's the idea. Let's put a fiber pop in it at this location. Let's put the big links up here. Let's let's buy ourselves time until we can actually uh, put fiber in. And I envision that every three hops on our network, we'll have a fiber pop. You have to. I mean, the data demands are just outrageous. So, this was a project that uh, we attempted the year before uh, to, to do it. Uh, to my knowledge, we're the only wireless um, grantee. Had to be middle mile. You know, there are constraints on what you can do from a last mile perspective. Um, but this buys us time, allows us to increase the speeds of service packages. Uh, right now, we're an unlimited use company, but we're data capped, right? Because we only offer two and a half meg service or five meg service. So use it all you want, but you know you're going to hit that, you know, that peak. So when you say middle mile, who does the last mile? We are the last mile provider in our footprint, so okay. we, we do have multi-point systems. We utilize, uh, we have, we're a license holder for 2.5, we own a, a basic trade area um, that's been around for since 99. Um, okay, we're a recipient, and we built a 3.65 uh, gigahertz WiMAX network, and then like all fixed wireless providers, they have legacy systems, I call them the 2.4 or 5, 5 gig type network. No license required, just put it up and Thing. So we have 
combination of all of those. 3.6 by acquired license? It's a light license. You just have to register your sites. Okay. Yep. And in 2020, that will change. They'll, they'll expand the ban. There'll be a public auction on it. But they will increase um, the stakeholders share. So like right now, we operate on 50 megahertz. In 2020, because we have 60 registered sites that are in operation, we'll be given another 50 megahertz or so, hopefully, to use. And that requires line of sight or? Um, yeah, we always try to install for line of sight. The, 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 the differences between frequencies, uh, obviously the lower the frequency, the better the propagation of that signal. Uh, but our best operating frequencies are 2.5 because it's licensed and it operates at four times the power of the unlicensed frequency. So we actually have indoor modems in some communities where they're close enough to the tower. Uh, WiMAX networks operate more forgiving in a non-line of sight, so that can be near line of sight, you can have some trees in the way. Um, if you go to a 2.4 or 5.8 legacy low power, you better be line of sight. What kind of distance are you looking at? Our average, uh, our average is six miles, which is the ideal distance. But when you're out in the country, Pam lives 17 miles away. She's gonna it works get, fine. She's gonna get connected. My two-year-old doesn't yell too much. She doesn't have, she doesn't have much potential for high bandwidth. You know, you have a two and a half meg package. That's about it. Whereas I'm in 35, 365, excuse yeah. me, and I'm oh nine ten miles from the access point and I'm on five meg and I'm able to in my home office successfully very successfully use voice over IP. So what about video? Uh, like yeah, Skype or <laughs> like Skype or my husband or excuse me, my son <laughs> two kids in the house. No, um, my son does PlayStation Four. And when you're talking video, I have a two-year-old, and he likes to watch Daniel Tiger 24-7, whether it's on TV or not. Well, you poor woman. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm well, I'm not home all day, so I'm lucky there. Yeah. But he's able to do that while I'm in my home office. So it, it we usually don't have any issues. And my husband is, is, is really huge onto into sports, so we get to listen. To, you think Daniel Tiger's bad. We get, get to listen to K-Fan all day from 8 to 5. So I'm so glad they're on every day. Um, so we're all three are streaming are, are working and, and doing our own thing at the same time even on the two and a half meg service and it, and it works absolutely great for our family and we do actually have a radio station customer two, two radio station customers that stream